What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in again this week. Uh, one of the questions that I get asked a lot of times is how I got started in Unreal Engine. And if I have any sort of formal training or anything like that. And I don't. I do have a degree in audio engineering, but most of Unreal Engine is completely self-taught. And I do say mostly uh, because while I was in college for audio engineering, I did have one class where we had to add sounds to an Unreal Engine project. And that's just kind of what sparked my interest. Uh, I am trying to find that original project and maybe do a video on that as kind of a origin story. And now that I have did that project, like, I don't know, six years ago. Um, but basically what I do is I play games and I find things that are interesting you know, from an audio perspective. And then I go to Unreal Engine and either through tutorials that I find, uh, piecing them together, or just plain old messing around with stuff and trying to figure it out. Uh, I try to replicate that. And that's what I've done for this week's video. And so I'm sure if you saw the title, uh, you know that we're talking about the Grand Theft Auto radio station. And, um, so basically in Grand Theft Auto, you know, if you're in a vehicle and you hold the letter Q, you get this radio menu that pops up. Now I do have all the audio from the game muted just cause I don't know if it's gonna cause any issues here on YouTube. Uh, but basically, you know, when you hold Q, you get this radio menu pops up and you can select a radio station and it'll change to that radio station. So that's what we're gonna be doing in Unreal Engine today. So with that being said, Let's get started. So before we dive into Unreal Engine and start creating this radio system, um, I do want to mention that the radio menu itself, I did not create. Uh, it was actually created by Polyhavoc. Uh, you can get this exact same menu uh, on the Unreal Marketplace. You will find a link to that in the description below. You will also find a link to their YouTube channel uh, because they've actually already got a playlist set up with three very short, very easy to follow videos on how to set up that menu. And the reason I'm directing you over there is I have to give credit where credit is due. They did a great job on the tutorial. I am not going to be going through how to set up the menu itself. What we're going to be doing today is getting this menu to select the radio stations. So let's jump into that Unreal project and I'm gonna show you a preview. I do already have it built out here. Just kind of give you a preview of what it's gonna look like when we're finished and then we'll dive into how I set it up. So uh, we do have our guy here in the game and I've got it set up so that with the Alt key it does pop up this radio menu with some radio station icons that are just clip art because I'm terrible at the artwork of games. And if we use our mouse just like we did in Grand Theft Auto and uh, we select a radio station, it will then play that radio station. And we can jump all over this menu here. And you can see that it functions. And um, I guess now we should probably jump into how to make it function. All right, so if you have followed along with Poly Havoc's tutorial on setting up the menu, you should be at this point where if we hold down the Alt key, we get the radial menu that pops up and, and there's some selection. And just like the end of his tutorial, the camera still moved. Uh, I'll try to show you how to get that to stop, but this is the point that you should be at. So now we need to set up our audio so that it will function with the radio menu. So the first thing that we need to do is open our project folder. And we're gonna come in here to the content folder and we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call it movies. And I explained in the jukebox video why we call it movies, even though it's audio. 
and we're going to open it up and you can see that the folder is empty and I'm going to go ahead and drag over some of the audio files that I've already got. So these are the audio files and I'm just going to copy and paste and in Unreal we're going to get this pop up down here in the bottom corner. It says five changes of source content files have been detected. Do you want to import? And we're going to say yes. So it is going to go ahead and import those for us. And if we look at our content browser, we now have movies and all of these assets. And if we open that uh, documents folder, you're going to see that we're going to have all of our WAV files as well as the .u asset files. So the next thing that we need to do is I'm actually going to, uh, I've already got a folder here called user imports. It's what I like to use to kind of let myself know, hey, these are the things that you've imported and aren't part of an asset pack. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna create a new folder here. And we're just gonna call this uh, radio data. Now inside our radio data, uh, we're gonna go ahead and right click and we're gonna go down to media and file media source. And because we have five different audio files, I am just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this out four more times. All right, I'm letting it catch up there. Because we do need a file media source for each one of those audio files. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this first one and under file path, we want to target the actual WAV file. I'm gonna go ahead and go through these real quick. All right, so I've got all five of our media source files here and I've already renamed them to what each track is. Now, the next thing that we need to do is create our playlist. So we're gonna go jump back down here to media and we are going to create a media playlist and we'll just call this radio underscore PL for playlist. And when we open this up, it already identifies the file media sources. And I've made a cheat sheet, which I will pull over here because I want these in a specific order. And so we're gonna go country, classic, metal, rock, and then techno. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this off to this screen. So the first one we want is the country track, which is Gold in Them Hills. And I'll expand this play this list here so that you can see. Uh, the next one is gonna be classic. And then we have our metal. And then rock and then techno. And the reason that we want these in a specific order is because we're looking for each one of these items to pertain to a certain number on our playlist index, which is the zero through four. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. So we can go ahead and save this, close it. And now we need to create our media player. So we're gonna go back down to media media player, we don't need the video, and we're just gonna call this radio underscore player. And go ahead and open this up. We're gonna double click on our radio player. And so you can see now in our actual media player, we've got all five of those assets. So we can go ahead and save this and close it. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to create our media player blueprint. So we're gonna go blueprint, uh, create an actor blueprint, and we'll call this radio underscore BP. We'll open this up, and under the components here, we're going to create a media sound component. Compile this and save it. And I almost forgot over here in our media player on the right side under our details, we do need to also set that to what media player we want. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. And that's it. 
that we don't have to do anything in the event graph. Um, all we need is that radio blueprint. Because typically, like what we did in the jukebox video, we went into the graph and that's where we set up our radio controls and we set it to start on, you know, the beginning of the level. But in this instance, since we're triggering it with the radio, uh, the radial controls, we actually need to go into the widget graph. Now, in order to get this to play, uh, we do need to drag that blueprint into the level. And since it's a 2D, uh, just kind of plays the sound everywhere. There's no kind of attenuation based on distance. We can just drag it into the level, set it, and forget it. We'll go ahead and save that after we've drugged the uh, blueprint in. And we're going to go back. And like I said, we're going to go into our radial menu. And we're going to switch over to the graph. Now, inside our radial menu graph, uh, you can see I've got these add icons that aren't connected. Um, because if I do connect them, uh, we do actually get this weird kind of uh-oh face. I mean, we don't want that. Uh, I did throw together some very, very terrible um, icons. And when we add those icons, we do want them to be in order uh, because it's going to start at the 12 o'clock position and move clockwise. And like I said, we wanted to start with that country and move these around. So we want the, the icons to correspond in the correct order. So I do have uh, those terrible assets that I created, and we're just going to plug them in. Like I said, make sure that you're putting them in in order. Otherwise, if you hit one radio station, it's going to play audio from a different station and it's going to sound. So I'm going to go ahead and set these up real quick. And so now when we come in here, now there's still not going to be any audio yet, but now we actually have those icons. So we're actually almost finished. Uh, what we need to do is come over here on the left and we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call this radio player. And under our variable type, uh, this is going to be a media player. And we do need to compile this first because otherwise we're not going to get this radio player default value here. And we're going to make sure that it's set to our radio player. What we're going to do is we're going to get a reference to that. So now that we have a reference to our media player, uh, we're going to jump back over here to our design. And with the radio wheel selected, we can scroll all the way to the bottom. And you're going to see this selection change for event. We want to go ahead and grab that. I'm just going to drag this up here by our radio player. And we're going to drag off of our radio player. And we want to open the playlist index. And off of our selection change, we want to pull off here. And we want to select under our utilities. And we're going to add a couple pins here because we do have five different sources. And then from our return value, we're going to return that to the index, and we're going to connect these two. Now, here's where it comes into play why we put those tracks in a certain order so that we had those index numbers. So when it comes to indexing, it always starts with zero instead of one. So for option zero, we want that to output zero. And then for option one, we want one. And two, three, and then four. And we can go ahead and compile this and save it. So now as we select the first option, it's going to output the number zero. And it's going to output it to our index. And that's going to tell our index to play whatever track is in slot zero. And the last thing that we need to do is on our open playlist index, we do need to select the playlist that it's going to be referencing. So another compile and save.
And that's it. If we were to go ahead and then open this. So we've got our guy in, in our city that kind of mimics Grand Theft Auto. And we hold down the Alt key. It brings up our menu. And now you can hear that it's selecting that different audio. Now, as I mentioned, you know, we are going to get the camera moving around. And I will show you real quick how to, uh, how to deal with that. And because I have the controls for this set up in my level blueprint, what we're going to do is off the add to viewport, we're going to set input. And we want this set to game mode and UI. We're going to drag off our get player controller. And then off of our remove from parent, we are going to set the input uh, to game mode only. And we can get a reference here as well. You go ahead and compile, save. And now when we come into our game here, it doesn't, the camera doesn't move. All right, guys, so that is going to wrap things up for this week's video. I hope you found this informative and Polly Havoc. If you happen to see this video, thank you so much for creating not only a great asset, but a great and easy tutorial to follow. Don't forget that today is the final day to get your entry in for the I challenge you to sound design this clip number eight. I will be doing a live stream of those entries this coming Friday, the 15th at 3 p.m. Eastern. If you'd like to join the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, there will be a link to that in the description below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Until next time.